Hi, I'm James Kotecki. You're here with me in the C-Space Influencer Studio here at CES 2019. And with me is Katie Ford, the Chief Client Officer of Amobi. Amobi, you may recognize as the sponsor of the C-Space Studio. So thank you so much for that and welcome. Thank you. Thank you. The space looks great. Well, thanks. Um, let's start off by uh, defining what Amobi is. How do you introduce yourself and your company to someone that you just meet here for the first time at CES? Amobi is a global independent uh, advertising platform for marketers, um, agencies um, to use to really for converge solutions across social, digital, and TV. And really any medium that can be um, that can actually be ingested and transacted mm -hmm. um, from agency, in council, managed service, self service, we can actually do that within our platform. So are you kind of an all-in-one solution? Is that the message to your clients? That you is don't need to go anywhere else? Exactly it. Um, we are just actually now, you know, we just went live with a digital out of home. So really it's about the audience. So wherever you can reach an audience, um, we are actually ingesting all those media types um, because we believe that that's part of the consumer journey. So we are, we are the platform in which you can actually you know, reach the consumer. So let's talk about digital out of home. I know this is a big focus for you. You just mentioned it. Um, I see you know, billboards all over here at the Aria that are digital billboards that are constantly changing. Is that what is meant by digital out of home? It is. It, it actually extends all the way from your mobile device all the way to those screens that are actually changing in, you know, instantaneously. Right. Um, so it's really that, that physicality. Um, in terms of actually something as big and spectacular as, as Times Square um, to the elevator, like a Captivate, mm -hmm. um, or your overall mobile device. So it's really about that. It could be you know, top of the funnel um, or mid funnel or lower funnel, that last moment of truth. So is it is the definition of it like advertising that knows that I'm in a physical place and adjusts for that? It's exactly it. It's ex so uh, tell me about what the innovations are that you guys are pushing forward with digital out of home now. I know that the ability to buy that programmatically is a big part of the offering that you have. It's, it's significant. Um, so we have an amazing engineer team that has, has really prioritized that. So um, in December, we launched an in-council um, uh, where advertisers, um, agencies can go into our platform and transact programmatically for digital at home. So they can buy the audience and transact that. Um, we did a partnership with Place Exchange. They've been a fantastic partner um, in terms of actually integrating their um, platform uh, and our platform. So super, super proud. Um, you know, we can actually do um, cross-device attribution so we can really understand where digital at home sits within the consumer journey, which is exciting for us um, from, a, from an engineering standpoint, but also for advertisers because it's really kind of that missing link mm -hmm. that goes from, you know, from the digital to the social um, to TV and not out of home. Uh, give me an example. Now that you can do all this, what are some brands doing uh, with digital out of home that they weren't able to do before? What's innovative here? Um, I think, you know, I just had this conversation um, with one of the partners. You know, attribution is going to be a huge piece. It's been kind of that missing link in digital out of home. Um, and, they, and sometimes they didn't actually get all the dollars that they could have because they couldn't actually um, attribute it. So mm -hmm. within our overall Amobi ID, we can now actually do that, which is super, super exciting. And it's an industry first. Um, that we are very proud of and uh, clients are very excited about it. So paint a picture for me, I'm a consumer, I wake up at my house and I'm commuting to work. What are some of the things that I'm now going to be experiencing uh, or is it going to look just like it did except it's going to be more targeted to me, I might not even notice it. You as a consumer, should, it, should, it should just be more relevant to you. So mm -hmm. in terms of actually you know, me um, interacting, James, with you, right? In terms of actually the, the, the right message at the right time at the right place. So we'll be able to understand your behavior so that we serve you that right ad. To you though, um, it should really be no different. It's not going to be disruptive. It's just about how we're transacting on our side and also um, making sure that we're actually doing it um, in a um, transparent uh, way um, in, in terms of across kind of the supply chain. Is there anything still holding back digital out of home? Um, you know, there's, there's still some standardization that has to happen. Um, measurement is also, um, th there's been some significant headway made um, in that in terms of the IEB is, is, is making some headway there. Um, you know, scale has always been um, a, a barrier in terms of um, agencies or marketers putting dollars into out of home, um, and now that the supply side is coming together, you know, you know, with the SSPs like a place exchange and aggregating that, um, we're really kind of you know breaking through that barrier, um, and so I, I see a huge growth for 2019 
Um, now it's only going, it's still in single digits uh, of what it's transacted programmatically. Um, and that will, that will grow, but it's not going to be you know, high, high double digits, but it will definitely grow in 2019. And so we've already had lots of clients reach out that are super, super excited. And, and just to define it for people, take me, what, what's the dark ages view of this? Like before programmatic, what was the only way that people could actually do this? Th they were uh, interacting with a out-of-home buyer mm -hmm. and buying board by board. Yeah, okay. So that's, uh, that's uh, so the, you've basically enabled people to do a digital out-of-home what, for example, Google has been able to do kind of all along with people buying programmatically and not having to call someone up and, it, it, uh, exactly. and, and kind of guess at what your audience should be or might be. Right, and, and the ability, the, the, the scale that digital at home suppliers actually have, it's, it's, it's a huge coup to them in terms of actually what they can actually sell. So in, in terms of actually place of time, day, audience, um, mm -hmm. because you're reaching different people at, at different mm -hmm. times and, 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 and putting that right audience, that right message. Are we at the point now where you can change an ad in the middle of the day if fewer people are walking by than you thought, or if a different demographic is walking by than you initially anticipated? Is it that level of advancement? Yes. Yep. Okay. Now, the creative has to catch up to it, and so that ah. will be the ne next frontier. Mm -hmm. um, you, if you can identify where the, you know, who, the who, um, and then we can actually um, get that message. So we've, we've nailed that check, and then we can actually report on the back end um, of how it's delivering the creative message is, is, is still going to be king. Um, and so, you know, I, I implore to the creative agencies um, to make sure that we're, you know, we're, we're tailoring it for um, digital at home. And the creative side, I imagine, is also partly responsible for making sure it doesn't cross the kind of creepiness factor, yes. where it doesn't seem disruptive to me. And it's not like in Minority Report, where they were walking by the ads and it would say, uh, you know, Katie Ford, you must buy this right now, because it would right. know specifically that you were walking by. It will not. We are, yeah. we are compliant um, to, to that, that it won't be the creepiness. I mean, <laughs> yeah. we also, we, we, there's no retargeting in terms of actually, if I see you walking down Fifth Avenue, I'm not gonna keep on retargeting you down all the way down Fifth Avenue. Okay. Um, and so there's some, some compliance. And is that, a, is that an ethics and standards issue? I mean, certainly technologically it's possible, right? Uh, ethics and standards in terms of actually, that's just creepy in terms yeah. of actually, but there's some protocol um, put in place. Mm -hmm. um, now we can actually find if you are, um, James, you are walking down the street and then you actually um, go home and I can actually find you on your desktop because mm -hmm. it's a certain ID that doesn't say to James, but it actually says to that ID, um, we can actually then retarget mm -hmm. you that way. And this is based, what, on my mobile device, typically? That it knows that that's how it's knowing who's walking yeah. by and who right. it is? Right. And is this something that consumers are able to turn off yes. if they want to? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's all opt-in. So uh, let's talk about you for a second. You've got a lot of, uh, I noticed you had a lot of awards, a lot of awards. Uh, in your background. So congratulations on all of them. <laughs> I can't even list them all here. Um, what is your advice to others here at CES who would like to reach the point in your career that you've reached and to, uh, to get a lot of cool awards? Passion and persistence. Have passion for what you do because when you have that and you believe in you and you believe in what you're doing, um, it's, it's easy kind of, to, not easy, but to rise to the ranks. Mm -hmm. Persistence of never give up, right? Um, there's many times in my career in which the easy thing to do would be like, I, I can't deal with that, I'm gonna just give up, um, versus doing what I say that the right thing to do mm. is the persistence of pushing through it. Um, and that has served me well. Um, and so also being um, authentic, you know, and, and always sticking true to who you are and kind of your moral compass, um, that has served me very well. It's maybe gotten me you know, kicked out of certain things or, or meetings, but they've always known who brand Katie Ford is mm -hmm. and that people can trust me. And if I give my word, my word is my everything. So, so passion, persistence, authenticity. I like that because none of that has anything to do with technology. And as technology changes, all that is still going to be completely so, relevant advice. It's even more important. I think that the notion of IQ, EQ has been in the past, this whole notion of LQ, leadership qualities, hmm. and the things that I just mentioned in terms of that passion, that persistence, that authenticity will be invaluable. And you know, I had a conversation about someone, what are, what are the college kids learning today? And you can teach a lot of the technology and what buttons to push, um, but teaching um, the things that I just talked about, that, that, that is something that has to actually be within you. Yeah. You're on a board of an organization called She Runs It. Is I am. Correct? Um, and this is about uh, elevating women in the workplace, if yes. I'm not mistaken. Yep. So uh, we're here at CES. Obviously, uh, gender equality, women in tech is a major issue people have been talking about for a long time. Uh, where are we in 2019? And what is one kind of tangible thing that you hope changes or advances in 2019? Can I say two? Sure. Okay. 
um, in, in terms of um, paying for the job versus the person who's actually do it, so equality in pay, um, but also extending to what California's actually done in terms of um, the percentage of women who sit on boards. In terms, of, I think that is, it will, it will help shape this is a um, California law that you have to have a certain percentage of women on your board. Correct, that will kick in um, in 2019. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, taking that, if it has to be state by state, it would be great if it was federal um, to actually have that because I think that will help shape the organizations by actually having a diverse voice um, on the board of directors. Great, well, uh, let's close it out with a big thought. So fill in the blank for me. 2019 will be the year of? Connection and convergence. I love it. Let's leave it there. Katie Ford, Amobi, <laughs> thanks so much for joining me thank you here so in much. the C-Space Influencer Studio. And thank you so much for watching. I am here at CES 2019 in the C-Space Influencer Studio. My name is James Kotecki, and keep it right here because more great conversations about the future are just a click away. <laughs>